Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the Nexion timers. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on them. For this video, I'm going to have two pages. On the second page, I'm just going to have two buttons and a timer. And the one button will just go back to page one, and this one I'll explain later. And on page one, I'm going to have four timers, a number field, a global number field, a page so we can go to page two, and this button so I can disable timer number three. We're going to set up timer zero first. And we're going to set this for 50 milliseconds. So every 50 milliseconds, which if you'll notice, is the lowest time that this can be set to. It can be set from 50 to 65,535. So we're going to set it to its quickest time. So this is going to execute every 50 milliseconds. And every 50 milliseconds, we're going to have this number field display the seconds. And the next has a run time, has a real time clock in it, and you can use it the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, or the seconds. And we're going to use the seconds for this. So every 50 milliseconds, we're going to get that time, and we're going to put it right here. So a lot of times it's not going to do any change because it's just going to get it every. It'll update every second. It will change the value every second, but it'll update it every 50 milliseconds. Now on this one we're going to do it a little different. We're still going to display seconds, but we're going to use timer 1. and We're going to change it so it updates every second, or 1,000 milliseconds. And we're going to have it increment the value that's in this number field. So it's going to start with 0, and every second it's going to increment. So they're go both going to be second counters. And you can increment with just the plus plus on the other end of it there. I'm going to run this in debug and show you how it works. Okay, so the real-time clock gets the time as it is. It doesn't start from zero. It starts from wherever the next real-time clock is. This starts from zero and counts up every second. Now the interesting thing is when we go to another page and come back, what will happen? We have this set to global, so it should hold the value. And this is reading the clock internal to the next itself. So when we come back, this is at 50, and this didn't count. Now we'll do it again, and I'll set this at 30. And we'll wait here about 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, about 3 seconds to 6 seconds now. And see, that's still sitting at 30. Whereas this is continuing to get the seconds and increment the seconds. So one of the bad things about using it, uh, just incrementing the value, when you go to another page and you come back, it doesn't increment. But you can set the timers to be global. So I already have this value set at global, so when we go to another page and comes back, it doesn't reset to zero. But we can do the same thing with the timer. We can change it to a global variable or a global timer. And now when we run it, we'll see if that works. So now we see that they're counting up. Oh, they're almost in sync right now. So now when we go to page 2, we'll do it on the 10. And when we come back, it still didn't work. So even setting the Nexion timers as global, they don't continue to operate when you go to another page. This timer also doesn't operate, but since the real-time clock is keeping the seconds in the background, when we come back to the page, it gets that value and refreshes it. So it appears to keep it up to date, or it appears to keep running, but it doesn't really. There's another way to maintain this value, and I'll show you that next. So we'll go to this other page, and we'll set this timer here. We're going to set it to update every second, just like the timer on the other page that's incrementing the value. And then we can go over here, and we can just increment it because it's a global value. And you can see the things, they list the things that are global. So timer 1 is a global value, and then that n1 is a global value. So we can do n1.val++. Now when we run it, it should keep track even when we switch pages. 
So we can, we can see we're back to counting up just like we have been. We changed it right on 10. We'll wait a few seconds. And then we go back, it should be higher than 10. And you can see that it maintained its value. Now it's not maintaining its value because of the timer on page one, but when you go to page two, so if you had three or four or five pages, you'd have to copy that timer across all the pages. But then you might question why, why can you set timer one to be a global timer if you can't access it or if it doesn't run when you're on another page. But the thing you can do is you can access the values that are associated to the timer. So you can set the timer itself or you can enable and disable the timer. We're going to do that next. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to speed up the timer. And this time we'll select timer. In the last one we selected the N1. This time we'll select time TM1. And we'll set the uh, time, TIM, and we'll set it equal to 100. So now when we hit this button, it's going to start counting every second, but when we hit the button, it'll jump up and count up much quicker. So as you can see, it's counting up at about a second each. And now if we go to page two and we hit this button, it just changed the value on that timer. And you can see now it's counting up quickly. So even though we're on page two, we were able to affect the timer on this page. The next thing we'll do is we'll disable the timer. So we just change, instead of TIM, it's EN, and we set it equal to zero. And this will just stop the timer from counting altogether. And you can see that it's counting we're on page one here. But when I go to page two, it was on six. It is counting right now. I'm going to disable this and go back to page 1 and it counted up to 12. So that took 6 seconds to do that, but you can see that it's not counting. But all that we disabled was the timer on page 1. So when I go to page 2 and then I click back, it continued to count while we were on page 2 because we didn't disable the timer on page 2. So we'll go back to page zero. So when you are using the same timer on multiple pages, if you go to enable and disable them, then you have to remember to enable and disable all the timers that are associated with that field. The other thing you can do is you can use one timer to control other timers. We're gonna use timer two to control timer zero and timer one. Now timer zero is running every 50 microseconds or 50 milliseconds, and timer one is running every, every second. So we're gonna set timer two to run every five seconds. And we're gonna have it do a little bit more. So if timer zero, and we're only looking at timer zero, if it's enabled, which it will be at the beginning, then we're gonna disable timer zero and timer one. And then we're gonna turn N1, the background color, to red. Else, if it's zero, which it will be the next time through, we're going to enable these two timers and turn the background color back to its white. You can see it should count up to about four or five, and then it goes red, and they both stop. Now, since this one's reading the seconds, it should jump up about five seconds. Well, this one isn't. This is just incrementing. So every five seconds, I guess every four, because it it doesn't quite make it to the next second. You can come up with some interesting reasons why you might use a dual timer setup like this. If you've been watching the, the video series I've been making on the countdown timers, the reason that I'm putting this video out right now is because I'm going to use something like this in the next countdown timer video, and I want to be able to refer back to why I'm doing it or a, a more in-depth look at it. I'm going to disable timer 2 right now so it doesn't run. And we're going to do something with timer 3. I'm going to go ahead and run this just to make sure that I have it set back. And I do. It's not stopping. So now on timer 3, we're going to run it every 100 milliseconds. And all we're going to do is we're going to enable timer one. So every 
100 milliseconds, we're going to enable timer 1 down here. So if you want, take a second here and just think about what you think might happen by just enabling an already enabled timer. I'm going to throw it into debug now and I'll show you what happens. And you'll see this is counting up, but this isn't doing anything even though the timer is enabled and I'm continuing to enable it. What's happening is every time you enable a timer it restarts it so it sets it back to zero and since it's doing it every hundred milliseconds and this timer is set to not do anything till it reaches a, a full thousand milliseconds or a second it just keeps getting reset so it never can get to that one second. So now we're going to use this dual state button here just to show you or further show what I mean by that. I like to do things on the release, so we're going to do it on the release. So we're going to take timer 3 and we're going to enable it, but we're going to set it equal to the value of this button. And when you press the button, it's either the value is either a 0 or a 1. So depending on the state of this button, will determine whether timer 3 is running. And if timer 3 isn't running, then it's not going to enable timer 1, and timer 1 then should be allowed to count this up. If timer 3 is running, it will continually enable timer 1 or reset timer 1, so then this will not count up. I also want this to show the state that it currently is. So we're going to go down here and we're going to set its initial value because it's going to be enabled initially. And we're going to set the text to 1. This should be set to 1 right now, so I must not have hit enter. Okay. So now we're going to run this and when this is 1, this should be not counting, but when I turn this off, then this should count. And you can see this is active, which is causing enables to be sent, which stops this from counting. But when I shut this off, then this can start to count. So if you can imagine a scenario where you have an Arduino in this state where it's sending a signal saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and then this not doing anything, but if the Arduino stops sending the signal, and this gets disabled, let's say, then it can set off an alarm. Instead of counting something, it could change the color of something. It could change this page 2 to red. We can do that real quick, and I'll show you uh, a better example here. So if timer 1 maxes out, not only does it increase this value, but we're going to have to change it a little bit. We're going to have to increase it so I have time to... Uh, We'll set up for three seconds. So I have a little more time to hit the button because it's going to start on. Oh no, it'll be okay. It's going to start on so it won't be counting. I could have left that at one second. Run debug now and I'll show you what I mean. So if you think of this as my example, the Arduino is sending a signal. In other words, it's on, they're connected. But let's say I pull the wire or for some reason it's not sending the signal anymore. This could go down which could then allow this counter to count up and turn on the and turn like a warning light or something that says hey we're not connected anymore and then once it gets connected again it could change that to a blue or a, a state that says hey we're okay again so in this video I went over just a, a little bit more in depth on timers we set up a timer here timer zero that accesses the real-time clock so that way when we go from one page and back it still keeps time even though it's not collecting the time. Over here, timer 1, we set it up to work as a timer just to increment a value, but when you leave the page and you come back, because the timer stopped, it didn't increment it anymore. But then I was able to show you how to overcome that by adding a timer to page 1 down here that also incremented that same value on page 0 by setting it globally. So there are ways around that. And then I use this button here 
to show you how to access the global values of that timer on the first page because even though the timer doesn't continue to run which I personally wish that it would run in the background if you set it globally I would have expected it to continue to run but at least you can set the values of it we can set the enable we can set the the timing variable we can speed it up and slow it down on other pages which is nice because if you had an, an Arduino that you were wanting to speed up and slow down a timer and it was on a different page and you were doing something else but adjusting it you might want to be able to control a timer on a page that's not visible and this is some way you can do that and then I went over controlling timers with a timer and that can come in handy even if you can't think of anything right now if you continue to use these connections, a situation will come up where that will come in handy. And then finally I showed you that sending an enable signal to a timer resets it. So if this is set at, at one second or five seconds and I send a signal to it every second or every half second less than the total time of that timer, it will reset it back to zero and whatever event you have on that timer won't be triggered. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.